Welcome to this video on key economic indicators. We're going to share with you the many indicators investors and the Fed watch, analyze which each one measures, and explain why they are so important. There are so many indicators out there to look at, and all of them provide their own unique gauge on the health of the U.S. economy. But we'll only cover the key indicators you need to focus on, so you're better prepared to make informed decisions. You know how it is. You see the news. Job growth is slowing, manufacturing is contracting, consumer confidence is at an all-time low. What does it all mean? Where are the numbers coming from? How does it impact my credit union? There's so much data out there, and all of it can be overwhelming if you don't know what you're looking for. So, let's break down the few key indicators the markets really care about. But before we do, there are some important things you need to know. First, some indicators are considered top-tier data or those that are most important. These pieces of data have the ability to actually move the markets. Other data is less crucial to the markets and are considered second tier. We'll go over some second tier indicators, but we'll mainly focus our attention on the top tier. Just remember, what we go over today is not all inclusive by any means, and many investors like to look at a variety of indicators for different reasons or for a specific analysis. Second, indicators are announced at different intervals and in different ways. Some are announced weekly, many are monthly, and a few are only quarterly. Some indicators are expressed as a number and some are expressed as a percentage. Most of the time, these figures are measuring performance from the previous month. The markets then use these statistics to anticipate and trade off the numbers that have been announced. For example, the manufacturing index that is announced in December shows a comparison of activity from the month of November. Third, most of these numbers are gathered and reported by some agency of the government, like the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, the Commerce Department, etc., and are reviewed and adjusted as needed. So when analyzing and following these announcements, always look at the revision number from the previous month. Sometimes it doesn't change much, but there are months where this may have a profound effect on the predicted trend. Speaking of trends, one month's numbers does not make a trend. The market is notorious for trading quite aggressively off of a certain number when it's immediately announced. But good investors who want to look at the trend, a distinct pattern based on several months' numbers, of that indicator to determine what it means. If an indicator is negative one month, that may sound bad. But if the three-month or six-month trend has been positive, this one-month dip may not be a great cause for alarm. Let's get to those all-important key economic indicators. These are the ones that provide us with a good measure of overall economic performance. The main index the market follows is Gross Domestic Product, or GDP. GDP is a total of all final goods and services produced in the country, measured for a period of time. It's a good general snapshot on the strength of the overall economy. It is only announced quarterly and is backward looking. GDP is calculated by adding together variables using this equation. Are you wondering what that means? Let's break it down. C indicates all private consumption or consumer spending. G is the sum of all government spending. B shows some or all of the country's business spending on capital. And NX is the nation's total net exports calculated as total exports minus total imports. GDP is one of the few indicators that is announced on a quarterly basis from the Bureau of Economic Analysis and is revised two times before the final GDP figure is made official. Typically, revisions don't change much from the initial GDP announcement. GDP is measured as a percentage and decent economic growth generally ranges from around 2 to 4 percent. Strong economic growth, which we witnessed in 2002 to 2006, was in the 4 to 7 percent range. Anytime GDP is negative, this means the economy is struggling to grow for one reason or another. Anytime GDP is negative for three consecutive quarters, it's generally viewed or labeled as a recession. We saw this kind of activity during the most recent recession in 2008. We also saw negative GDP in early 2011, but it didn't constitute a recession and we saw economic growth pick up quite nicely the following quarters. Again, just one example of how one bad number does not make a trend. We can look at other detailed indices, which are announced monthly to begin to get a sense of how the economy has been performing on an ongoing basis. One critical area of the economy is the manufacturing sector. Although the economy has lost much of its manufacturing strength over the past few decades, we continue to manufacture quite a bit here in America. We can look at this sector to get a read on items such as consumer demands, prices, fuel costs, and employee costs, just to name a few. 
One top-tier indicator from the manufacturing sector is the Institute for Supply Management, or ISM, Manufacturing Index. This provides, among other items, a monthly index based on a survey of more than 300 manufacturing firms. Their index is called the Purchasing Managers Index, or PMI. PMI monitors employment, production inventories, new orders, and supplier deliveries. From PMI surveys, a composite index is created that monitors conditions in national manufacturing. As a guide, when the PMI index is above 50, it means manufacturing is expanding, while any reading below 50 indicates manufacturing is contracting. Because this is a manufacturing survey, if the economy begins to weaken, so does this index. In a number of cases throughout history, when the index begins to decline, it typically, but not always, leads to a recession. This is a good indicator to watch because as the economy is in recession, manufacturers produce less and sell off their inventories until demand picks up. A manufacturer can only sell off inventory for so long before they will need to produce again. When inventory levels get too low, or when demand starts to pick up, this manufacturing index begins to rise. It usually begins to increase before the economy is technically out of a recession. If regional data from the PMI is decent overall, it's a good sign that the overall ISM index will be strong as well. Everyone wants to see the ISM index to get a picture of the overall manufacturing sector and the nation's economic health. We mentioned inventories earlier when talking about manufacturing, so we track business inventories with an index compiled by the U.S. Census Bureau. These will determine if manufacturers have stockpiled too much product, Inventories are a measure of goods ready for sale, shipments that are still being held by the producer, or goods acquired for the purpose of reselling within the retail and wholesale trade industries. During times of slower economic activity, consumers will purchase less, meaning manufacturers will need to produce less and work through their inventories before producing more. As the economy begins to weaken, manufacturers see less consumer demand, so they produce less and begin to sell off their inventories before the need arises to produce more. Many times, manufacturers sell off inventory quickly and ramp up production again to catch up with demand no matter how weak. Then they'll taper the manufacturing process again as their inventories catch up. Bottom line, inventories are always trying to balance, and an increase means consumers are purchasing less and manufacturers need to be careful not to overproduce. Durable goods orders are a monthly index from the U.S. Census Bureau that reflects new orders placed with domestic manufacturers for delivery of factory hard goods or durable goods in the near term. Durable goods could be things like machinery, computers, vehicles, and so on. Durable good orders come in two releases per month, the Advanced Report on Durable Goods and the Manufacturing Shipment Inventories and Orders. Orders for durable goods can provide information on how busy factories may be in the future. Orders placed in current months may provide work in factories for many months in the future as they work to fill the orders. This tends to be a good sign for future business investments. Manufacturing plays an important role in the U.S. economy, but another major indicator is the housing sector. There are a number of key pieces that we look at to determine the overall strength of the U.S. housing sector. As we saw during the financial crisis in 2007 and 2008, a major housing problem can create a significant risk in the economy as the housing market impacts so many areas. A considerable amount of jobs are reliant on the housing sector, including construction, real estate brokers, attorneys, home improvement stores, furniture companies, and so on. Released monthly from the U.S. Census Bureau, the Housing Permit Index tracks a number of permits that have been issued for new construction, additions to pre-existing structures, or major renovations. These statistics are based on a number of construction permits approved. This index is a leading indicator as higher permits indicate construction work will be higher in the near future. This is a key measure to the strength of the housing market because before any construction can begin, builders have to get a permit and will most likely only get a permit approved if they're ready to build. As expected, permits start to decline as the economy begins to slow. Why? Because as consumers are less interested in spending money on housing, there's less need for permits. Once there are clear signs of economic strength and the consumer demand for new housing, construction, or remodeling rises, only then will you see permits increase. Then there are housing starts measured monthly by the Census Bureau. These track the number of new housing units or buildings that were started during the period. Starts could be for a single-family home or multifamily or apartment complexes. If building permits are increasing, then one would expect housing starts to begin to increase the following months. 
If housing starts are increasing, builders are confident in the economy and see the need to meet consumer demand for new housing. This indicator is also a very good leading index. Similar to building permits, housing starts begin to decline as the economy starts to slow. As with housing permits, once there are clear signs of economic strength and consumer demand returns, you will see housing starts increase again. This index is impacted not only by consumer demand, but also the level of interest rates as well. Once a builder actually finishes a house, it's then up to the consumer to purchase the new home. New home sales are measured by the Census Bureau and gauges how many newly constructed homes are sold during the month. This index is a great measure of the health for the housing market and the overall economy. If housing starts are strong, that means consumers feel more confident in making big purchases. It also means there should be an increase in other durable goods, such as appliances and other items to complete the home. This index jumps around quite a bit based on the economic conditions and could trend lower even in times of strong economic growth. The index is also impacted by the weather and time of year. People generally look to purchase a new home more so in the spring and summer rather than the winter due to the weather and holidays. But in general, when the economy slows and heads into a recession, you can see new home sales fall dramatically, much lower than trend. For instance, during the financial crisis, new home sales plummeted from an all-time high. It took a while for numbers to recover and move toward a normal trend. Other than newly constructed homes, people wanting to move will look at an existing house. The existing home sales data is measured by the National Association of Realtors and measures sales and prices of existing single-family homes for the nation overall. It gives breakdowns for the West, the Midwest, South, and Northeast regions of the country. These figures include condos and co-ops in addition to single-family homes. This is also a good measure of the strength of the overall housing market. Along with all the economic indicators we reviewed, there are so many more that can move the markets on a daily basis. One key item is the discussions and decisions of the Federal Reserve and the FOMC. The FOMC meets eight times a year and tries to determine the best way to manage their dual mandate of full employment and low controlled inflation. By using various tools, they can have a huge impact on the direction of the market and the economy. They use monetary policy to try and improve a weakening economy or cool down a very robust economy. U.S. companies announce quarterly earnings as well as earning forecasts, which have huge impacts on the markets and future projections on economic growth. The economies and the markets around the globe, particularly in Europe, also have major influences on our economy. And it goes without saying, fiscal decisions in Washington regarding taxes, stimulus packages, and more have an impact on the markets. To put it simply, there are a wide variety of economic indicators investors like your credit union tend to watch. There are a few that are main drivers of investor decisions and truly provide insight into the economy, as we discussed. Not only do economic indicators shape the way the markets move with indicators like GDP, manufacturing, housing, and inflation, but you need to also look at other segments of the market, including the Fed, how U.S. companies are performing, what's happening in the international markets, and what's going on in D.C. There are so many items that make our economy and markets move as they do. There's not just one indicator to focus on, and it's no surprise that two separate investors could be looking at the same numbers, but may very well come up with two different viewpoints on the direction of the market. There's no right or wrong answer, but by reviewing all the information available and keeping an eye on these key economic indicators, your credit union can make an informed decision on how the economy and the markets may impact your finances in the future. That was a lot of information, wasn't it? But we're not done yet! Look for more information in our next video, Key Economic Indicators Part 2.